Okay, story from Adrian Prezenko in the City Morning Herald. I'll be fascinated in the missiles. Thoughts here. Former Canterbury forward Jackson Torpenny has taken a landmark $4 million legal action against the club, claiming he was subjected to assault when forced to wrestle up to 35 teammates during a training session. Torpenny has commenced legal proceedings against the Bulldogs over an incident last year in which he was punished for allegedly reporting late for training. It is claimed the contract of the former Australian schoolboy was illegally terminated and he has not played football since. Those close to Torpenny believe he had a 10- to 12-year NRL career in front of him and given the average NRL salary, which exceeds more than 400000 considering his status as a junior representative star, it's predicted he could have earned more than that figure. So a $4 million landmark legal action is in process for Jackson Torpenny against his old club, the Canterbury Bulldogs, writes Adrian Prezenko from the City Morning Herald. This is a big story, Miss Ol. Big story. There's so much to unpack there. Firstly, is that him saying, I will never play rugby league again? If it's a 10-year career, 400000 a year, like no chance he's getting four hundred a year at the Bulldogs, by the way. But if we're averaging that out for 10 years, is he saying, I'm not going to play football for 10 years then? Well, that's, that's what it's saying. So he's done. That's what it's saying, he's yes. He's done. Yeah. Because of the trauma that this has caused him. Seemingly, yes. Okay. So if I turn up to a pool late, which is, you know, it's, it's my one job as yep. an athlete is to be at training on time. Some punishments that would happen for us uh, or some consequences of my actions. Let's call it that. Let's take out the word punishments. Consequences okay. of my actions. Uh, eight 200s, butterfly, um, 40 100s, freestyle on a short rest base. Just grueling, tough, hard sessions. Is this what actually happens? This is what actually happens. Okay, yep. Grueling, tough, hard sessions, sometimes to the individual themselves. Sometimes if it's a pattern and you need the culture of the, the squad to change, then you make everybody do the punishment so that I start ribbing you and saying, Joel, you can't be turning up to training late. I'm not doing that again. That's being out of order. But any time a person turned up to, to training late on, this, on the swim team, there was a consequence because that's, that's the world we live in. It's high performance. The one thing you have to be accountable to or for is being on time to training. That's all. It's it can be the easiest job in the world, Joel. There's no take home homework of oh, you know, I'm stressed about work. You're an athlete. It's 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 what you do. It's what we do as athletes. There's times when I've done those sessions and I've got out of the pool, and I'm dragging my ass because I've just done 1.6 kilometers of butterfly straight on short rest, and I feel rattled after it. Mm. Guess what? I'm not late to the training the next day. Yeah. It happens all the time. Where this story is getting taken so out of context, it sounds like he's come to the, he's come to Belmore and they've said, you're late. Here's WWE SmackDown. Go fight 35 guys. It was The wrestling was done at Smeaton Grange at Rob Whittaker's gym with the wrestling coaches. Mm. It's like saying you're late to swimming training, so swim extra laps. You're late to wrestling training, so do some extra wrestling. It's extra reps. They may have wrestled 12 blokes that day anyway, so it may actually only be an extra 20 blokes you're wrestling. Only an extra 20. But whatever, Joel. Like, yeah. seriously, as an athlete, you know, if, if you're, if you're a, in a corporate job and you're turning up to work late, one or two strikes and you, then you get sacked. They haven't sacked him. They've said, here's a punishment. You bounce back, come back tomorrow. It's character building. It's part of being an athlete. I, I cannot for the life of me understand it. Didn't, didn't bitch and moan at the time. Didn't cry. So, talking about, you know, he could barely walk. Well, guess what? Physical output does that sometimes. You mm. could be running. It doesn't have to do anything with the wrestling. Didn't realize there was an issue apparently until the next day. Didn't contact the club the next day. Like the, the the sequence of events doesn't make sense to me. But the fact that as an athlete, you can say, I was made to train too hard, it, it, it baffles me. I do think the wrestling is different. Like I think people will put it this way. The people who haven't been athletes will see it as very different. Of course, yeah. yeah and I the other that. thing, and even from the athlete's point of view, and I'm not suggesting these claims are wrong, but I find it very hard to actually see it. Um, I, 
I can't imagine any, even the best of our athletes, being able to take on 35 people one at a time. The numbers change every t- every time we see the story, it changes, right? But I, I think the best NRL wrestler in the comp, 35. Like I remember when we used to do it, and you could you could wrestle for a minute with mm. one person, mm. and you were absolutely cooked. So if somebody was asked to go 35 in a row, and mm. the clock is a massive factor in all of this, I just couldn't AC anyone being able to do it. Yeah, I just... So for a starter, 35 teammates, how many people in an NRL squad? Oh, with the with the extension players, probably 35. So there'd be 35 so basically there for if, Well, if there was, and sometimes people get invited outside the top group. But you think how many people would have been in rehab at that time not wrestling in any, yeah, at, I, I at just, any, any given point? This number, it gets bigger every time I read the story. We're at 35 now, so we're bigger than the top grade squad. There's no way that reserve grader training middle of the day when he was late for it, which was 10 o'clock pr- reportedly. Uh, I just don't believe the number. I don't believe it was 35 people. And I believe this is the, the thing that people are going to get caught up with here is he was made to, to wrestle 35 people. It was a punishment. He's emotionally scarred. They're using all this really, this terminology, which to the general public sounds horrific. But in the, in the context of a football club doing a wrestling session that you're late for, it's really not that outrageous. And there would be way, way, worse, way worse punishments over the years. What if it was a boxing session? Oh, Pre-season boxing. Sandhill sessions, all those. Like we, we did ones back in the day where you'd be running up and down. So we'd have four groups. Mm. You'd be running up and down Sandhills, carrying a person mm. in a stretcher bed. Yeah. And every 30 seconds a whistle would blow, you have to do that. Now, whoever was leading after 45 minutes or however long the time was, mm. you were able to stop. And the ones who were behind would get punished. So the last team might go for an extra 20 minutes. So I understand what you're saying when you're running to absolutely... If you and I wrestle, yes. what's, what's, oh, uh, like, what's the worst possible outcome? You're what? exhausted and I just pin you down on your back. What's, what do you, can I pick you up and slam you on your head? You, you know how these wrestling sessions yeah. go. So if you're exhausted and I'm fresh, what's the worst I can do to you? Yeah, well, I mean, you probably wouldn't beat me, but if... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? No, no, I understand. You know how these things well, you, you, work. You, you, you know just, how they go king of the ring punch, and stuff like that. not punching and stuff. We're not punching. So you would almost just lay there. When we're, when we're both full of energy, yeah. it actually is exhausting because we're going hammer and tong. But once I get you to the ground and once that, that minute finishes or whatever it is, then we relax. If you're exhausted and I'm full of energy and you've got nothing left, I put you on the ground pretty quick, then what? Yeah, but you know what? This is that's how you feel, and this is how I, I feel exactly the same way. And I wouldn't be humiliated by that. I'd just personally cop it. But we see it in the workplace. Every single person has a different tolerance for what is accepted to them. So mm-hmm. may, maybe out of all of it, he was just humiliated by the fact that. So you and I are both quite extroverted people. Yeah. He may be an introverted person who doesn't like this attention. Everything was on him. He was flustered at the time. We don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I don't have an opinion either way as to whether the Bulldogs are right or he's right. And really, it takes people far more educated on this stuff than me to be. They've got to interview a lot of people. But I personally, based on what's been described, I would have been after five people wrestling them, numbers six through to thirty-five. I would have been giving out absolutely nothing. So I would have been cooked. Yeah. Right. Um, but I wouldn't have been humiliated, and I would have turned up the next day, and I would have gone with it. But that's what I would do. Mm. That's what you would do. Mm. And I think there'd be a lot of people here listening going, well, I totally agree with you guys. But I think that's I think that's the biggest mistake in this whole story is people comparing it to their own experiences in a workplace. We're not in a workplace. We're in a high-performance sporting environment with 30 fully-grown men. There's no sensitivities of uh, women, children. It, it, this is 30 grown men, all on a similar physical capability, no one had a gun to his head. This is just part of what needed. This is this happens all the time in elite sport. In swimming, you have to do butterfly. In football, if you're late to a wrestling session, you, you're doing wrestling. Like the context of it is the whole thing. And the reason that people can't get their head around it is because they're thinking, well, if I was made to do this in my workplace, how would I feel? This isn't a normal workplace. You're not paid a million dollars like NRL players. You're not expected to perform in front of 50,000 people every weekend. Normal workplaces don't hold their employees to the same standards 
that high performance sport does. And it's a privilege and an honor to be a high performance athlete, to be paid the way these players are paid. And that's part and parcel of the job. And it, it, it baffles me. It baffles me. The court case, the figure, $4 million over 10 years. Who says you would have had a 10-year career? Who says you would have ever got $400,000? The, the whole thing is bewildering. And what I think it is, is it's a shock factor. Let's throw out all this really emotive language. Let's throw out this huge number. Let's throw out a 12-year career. Let's throw out $400,000 a year. And let's see what we can get the Bulldogs to sell that. Because no judge or court uh, or jury is sitting down looking at that and saying, yeah, this makes sense. Um, okay, it, what about on the other side of things? Okay, what about on the other side of things? We thought what's happened, and for his own reasons, um, he feels how he feels. Could there be a part of it that with all this blowing up now, there may be a stigma attached and he, he may feel as though he can't get a contract elsewhere? Would that be a consideration as part of this claim? Yeah, and if they had his best mental health, the Bulldogs never released his name. Yes. That was released from his camp. His manager released that story. If you had, if you weren't thinking $4 million lawsuit and you were thinking this guy needs to get back into an NRL system and I've got his best, um, his best intentions or I've got the best intentions for him and his career, you never would have leaked the story. And he wouldn't have this attached to his name. He may struggle to get another club now because guess what? Every other club probably agrees with me in saying that if we have a player that can't hack it in training, then we don't want him at our club. He's almost shot himself in the foot. But if that happened, and instead of releasing the story to the media, they go to the club and say, hey, this is being out of order. You know what? There's our player, my player has been wronged. Let's just sever ties here and he'll go and find another club. Yeah. The the only other punishment like that where I was absolutely out of my feet that I can think of was I was late for something, I think. Maybe it was a training session. So I had to do 2,300 metre sprints on the rower with... Yeah. Uh, maybe 20 seconds rest. Yeah, it's rough. Whatever it might be, rough, yeah. right? And I've got the smaller legs, so particularly rough for the shorter people. So I I would have probably preferred the wrestling yeah. than do something like that. Oh, that's, that's so gross. we did that, Yeah. and I didn't quite meet the time, and I won't mention the coach. They made me do it all again, mm. and that completely broke me, mm. right? But in my head at the time, and I can't speak for Jackson Torpenny, I sort of felt like, okay, well, I made the mistake. I was late, and this is what the punishment yeah. is going to be. And, and I was busted, and I was hating the coach at the time for it. But, um, yeah, it, it's it's a real tricky one. Well, Tourist, you, you don't come from the athletic world. What's what's your view on all of this? How dare you? I've got the, the <laughs> Scotland, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Scotland under-12s, K- former Kavitos. squash, re, uh, ranked seven. Thank you very much. Yes, um, Toss. He was a mad Toss thrower. I, I'm probably closer to your side, Joel. I think yes. probably in this day and age you can't really be doing that type of stuff personally. Um, if you go by our text line, Nothing has split the audience more yeah. than All this right. right here. Here's a it question. Is so fifty fifty. So, so no here, here's a question. Here's a question for both of you. Bulldogs had a really bad culture. Yep. They'd been losing for ten years straight. Yep. They had a really bad culture. They had a culture of losing. Yep. New management had come in and said this: that the players aren't meeting standards, the staff aren't meeting standards. They had to clear out an entire roster of thirty players in a three-year period because they had a bad culture. They had a losing culture, and players weren't meeting standards. A player turns up late to training. What do you do? Make him run till he vomits. And then if that player says, "Well, that's caused that's that's embarrassed me. That's caused me trauma." Like that's just as likely to happen because you've now said you'd give him a punishment until he vomits. I would, but it wouldn't be something that somebody else could inflict on. But what oh, are they well, inflicting? What are they inflicting? No, on? Well, they that, do wrestling anyway. No, no. But that's that's. I've got to say, with tourists on that part of it, it would be terribly uncomfortable if if I was wrestling you and I'm player number 20, and I know you're spent. It would be very hard on that player, and it would be very, very hard on the players who are still at the club mm. when they're being interviewed about this, where some people just, they don't want conflict. You know, they, they yeah. might care for Jackson Torp, but he also love the club, and what are they supposed to say? Like, they're, they're in a, it's a very, very tough... So, Tourist, he gets to the wrestling session late. Okay. And you say, no wrestling for you today, Jackson. No, no, normal, you're running until you vomit. Normal amount, and then back at the training the next day or whatever it is... I, I, there are other sports that surely they do. They have these type of things. They're turning up late. I know it happens massively in the NFL, and that is literally that. It's you're running until until you can't run no more. Okay, you're what about this? Sprints. Okay, so so is this a factor? As I said, I find it very hard to see somebody taking on thirty five individuals. 
at what point is it not okay? If he had to do two laps of that and he did 70 wrestles, uh, uh, is, is that number important or is it the same answer? I would, I would guess that it's uh, – and this happens all the like, – I've got so many mates that do MMA, jiu-jitsu, all that stuff, and I've spoken to them when this first came out back in the day. And they said it's a regular drill that one guy will, will wrestle everyone in the class yep. or the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say he's, they've said, all right, you were late. you got to wrestle each player. Let's go. What, boom, for boom, boom. 10 seconds each or Yeah, or whatever. Each player wants. It's, it's not it's – not, and that, to me, isn't excessive. Is he exhausted by player five, six, seven, sure, through to however many players were there? 35, definitely not. There's no way there would have been 35 players there. I would dispute that highly, that every player, including those in rehab, including juniors that all, all were out at Smeet and Grange, I highly doubt it. But I think what they've done here is they've shot as high as possible. How do we make this sound the most extreme as we can? Because yep. the, the, the language in it, you, you've... <laughs> You think you think it was a real workplace, and they've made him wrestle people in an office, like it's taken so out of context. Um, I don't think wrestling each player once is an obscene thing to do. Okay, what would you do for his punishment? Oh, well, as I said, I I, I only knew the punishment that I had, which was the sand hills and the example mm. I gave on the rowing machine, and I absolutely hated. And I actually would prefer. Um, to do the wrestling than the rowing, but I hated the rowing. Yeah. yeah, Jackson might hate the wrestling as much as I hated the rowing. Yeah. So, um, the the real victim in all of it, and I I know it it is literal and metaphorical here, but poor Jackson had his name leaked. Like those those in the know knew pretty soon because the story got leaked to the media, and they said we're not naming the player, but here's the story. Well, all you had to do was look at the team list each week and yeah. see who wasn't playing. Yeah. So Jackson was let down by the people in and around his support team who leaked that story because they've done him a massive disservice. Otherwise, I've got no doubt if we never find out about this, he gets another club because he was a talented young player, but he gets another club. He doesn't have this stigma attached to him and he goes on with his NRL career. Okay. Uh, have you say there's a lot of text coming through still, uh, many other NRL topics to get to, but we have been... Uh, taken out of time for this particular segment. Quick break and back with plenty more. But we're seeing all your texts here and very, very torn. And I saw yours there, Fitzy. I'll meet you at the back for a wrestle now, Fitzy. <laughs> uh, it's a run home with Joel and Fletch.